there's something hanging in your closet that you probably don't realize is there. The Goodwill name is one that most of us are probably familiar with, but you might not realize that these unassuming storefronts are actually employment engines fueled by our excess stuff. Yes, I said excess, but I'm talking about myself too. It seems comical that I'm sentimental about these shirts, but it's time to put them to work, putting people to work. Thank you. Here's your receipt. Have Thank you very place. much. You too. Welcome. Thank you. Goodwill is more than donation centers and second-hand stores. The engine of the Goodwill model is job training. In fact, right here in the back of this Goodwill store is a career center. Inside, people are getting job training that will enable them to find new or better jobs. I'm talking with Julie Bennett, and she's the Communications Director for Goodwill here in Columbus, Georgia. Julie, how do you transform donations into job training? We transform the proceeds from the donations that we receive on a daily basis into career services, and that's a variety of things, including everything from resume skills to um, interviewing skills and dressing for success. What's more, we really want to work to ensure that the people that we're serving are successful for the long haul. So we also provide financial education, such as learning how to budget and managing your credit and so on. On a national scale, last year we connected 216,000 people to jobs. In our region, we served 34,000 people last year and then connected of that about 4,600 to jobs. An hour of job training runs about $14.50 an hour. Believe it or not, about two outfits would, would fund an hour of job training. But there's also a sustainability component to what you're dealing with. A lot of the items that are in your stores were diverted from the landfill. But what happens to the stuff that doesn't get sold? We are the sort of the poster child, if you will, for sustainability. Of course, all of the clothes that are in our store that get sold have been reused and repurposed, so they are diverted from landfill. Uh, but the things that don't sell are actually recycled, so there's just a full cycle of sustainability here with the goods that we receive. So what's the difference between Goodwill and, say, one of these clothing donation boxes you might see in the gas station parking lot? I would advise consumers to be really careful where you donate your used goods. A lot of these bins that you'll see in gas station parking lots and different places are actually for-profit organizations that sometimes will try to portray themselves as a charity and they're not a charity. So if you're an individual who's looking to support a mission, you want to know that your donated items are going to support a great cause, I would say do your homework and, and be sure that you're, you're choosing a reputable organization such as Goodwill for your donated goods. The name of the organization says it all. I mean, it's about Goodwill. You know, it's about a partner you can trust. It's about um, helping people um, learn how to help themselves. We are definitely a, a nonprofit that you can trust and you can actually see the tangible results in your own community of the work that we're doing. Your donations and dollars also support the concept of reuse. Last year, in this Goodwill region alone, they diverted almost 7 million pounds from landfills. Donate stuff, create jobs. That's empowering Goodwill. It's also another easy way to be green. As always, our challenge to you, put your green on one leg at a time. Stay connected by becoming a fan of our Facebook page and help spread the green by sharing with your friends. Greenshorts.com. That's shorts with a Z.